Makes a change. Finally, Amy's pushing me on the swing. Last little morning in the park with the children before they head off on holiday to their grandparents in Northern Ireland for a week. Uh, it's been a busy weekend. I found friends down over the weekend. We have caught some of that on Instagram, and then I was in London uh, all day yesterday with meetings at the BBC and other places. Uh, taking this morning off because I want to spend time with them, get them to the airport, and then I really got to go into an incredibly intense practice regime because I've got four gigs over the weekend, uh, three of which I'm leading. Uh, thankfully the gigs I've done before, we're doing the Celebrating Blue Note at Saffron Hall, uh, we're doing uh, Jazz Vespers, which I've okay, done before but it's kind of slightly different, and then the 1959 gig at the cockpit in London. So loads on and I really need to get back in. So what I want to talk about in today's vlog is kind of how you go about doing that kind of intense practice. <laughs> So quite fortuitously, my good friend Dan Grief phoned me just as the Kate and the kids were disappearing from my view at the security gate, uh, which kind of changed my mind and, you know, kind of helped me. Uh, I never like leaving them. I never like them getting on a plane. I don't mind them going in the car anywhere. It's just planes always, yeah. Anyway, that's all done. So let's talk about this practice thing. Now, I've just been to get some supplies, get myself ready for the week ahead. But one of the things I need to think about now is just as I'm driving back home, is start to think about what I'm gonna do in this intense practice session. I'm gonna to have to start with long tones. I start all my practice sessions that are really, really good with long tones. And scales. And when I get to the level I'm at, not to be egotistical, but I've, I can't just run scales up and down in kind of root positions. I've either gotta be running them over the full range of the instrument, and more likely than not, because I've got certain gigs coming up this weekend, there are gonna be certain scales that I'm gonna to wanna to be able to rinse. Certain scales that I wanna be able to get and eat everything out of them. So, for example, one of those scales is G harmonic minor because the first track we play in the Blue Note gig is Moaning, the great Bobby Timms track, and you could basically rinse G harmonic minor over and over and over and over and over on that. So I'm gonna be running things like triad patterns, septad patterns, tetrads, kind of running up and down. What different variations can I get out of that scale? That's a good hour's worth of practice on one scale. And then thinking of another scale off the top of my head, uh, B flat Lydian dominant, which I've, sorry, B flat Lydian augmented, which I've spoken about in this one, is a great one to play over um, Blue Bossa, over the third line, as it were, if you were looking at a lead sheet. So I want to get in touch with that scale. Can I execute it? How fast can I execute that scale? Probably today, not very quickly, because I've had time off. I also then need to think about these classical pieces because I keep avoiding them because I've got this classical recital coming up in August and I am nowhere near ready on them and I, I really, the classical music you cannot hide, you have to practice it, you have to get it right. So I'm already now thinking about what I'm going to be doing when I'm in the practice room. I'm going to write it down, that's always important for me, writing it down, making sure I've got a specific plan written down these are the things I need to practice. This is what I want to achieve by the end of today's practice. But today, I already know my objective for the end of today's practice is just to practice. That is so important. Because now they've gone away, I'm thinking, do you know what, I can sit on watch a box set, or next day I can sit outside and have a beer. 
no, I need to get into that practice because I know tomorrow I have a full day of teaching. Friday, I have a full day of teaching. And Friday night, I've got a gig. Saturday, I've got a gig. Sunday, I've got a gig. Monday, I've got a gig. And I have to be in tip-top condition for those gigs. So there you go, the most important thing about the whole practice thing was having a plan, having an idea about what I wanted to achieve during my practice. More to come on that next week when I'm talking about the practice planner. Um, I've had to stop because the finger is just giving out, give it some heat, it tends to take the pain away. I'm definitely gonna look for this chili cream uh, that the surgeon recommended that I get hold of. I don't know whether you guys ever encountered this. Normally for me, going a day without practicing is, is quite odd, but going four days, as I just have done, when I first picked the horn up out of the case, I thought, like, oh, wow, I can play this. It sounds really good, actually. You know, I can play the saxophone. And then about 10 minutes later, I'm going, 
I can't play anything because I'm so out of practice and my fingers don't want to work and everything else like that. And then I get into the midpoint of the practice session and I'm screaming along and I'm playing moments notice and it's all coming out okay. Not totally okay. And then you know you move on to some of the ballads and you realise actually, do you know what, you spend a bit more time on some long tone. Playing ballads is a great way to sort of come back to doing long tone exercises in the middle of your practice. Maybe when your concentration's starting to go a little bit because you're getting distracted by other things or, you know, for goodness sake, we all, we all live in massively hyper... Um, oh, hyper distracted. If I'm going with hyper, we all live in a massively hyper distracted society. That's what I'm trying to say. I can't even say it. I'm so distracted. Anyway, thank you very much for watching today's vlog. I'm going to do a Q and A vlog. Um, please leave your comments. I read all the comments, even the nasty ones. I read as well. They tend to disappear soon afterwards. But I'm definitely going to do a Q and A in the next vlog. If I get a chance to do one over the weekend, I will do. If there are kind of, I think three tickets, maybe four tickets left for the Blue Note gig on Saturday in Saffron Hall. There are obviously loads of spaces available to come and see us at Methodist Central Hall doing Jazz Vespers on Sunday. That's at six o'clock opposite Westminster Abbey, right in the centre of London, across the road from Big Ben and all that kind of business. And then on Monday, we're at the Cockpit Theatre. Remember, if you haven't picked up on it already, if you use the word Coltrane, C-O-L-T-R-A-N-E, in the ticket, you can get two for one offers. So use that code at the Cockpit exclusively for you guys. Watching this video, two for one tickets for my gig at the Cockpit, doing 1959, the year that changed jazz again. And yeah, maybe we'll play Giant Steps on that one. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you check out my last vlog, uh, which is here. And this vlog was this time last year, playing the largest saxophone in the world, a sub contrabass at the Frankfurt Music Messe. Thank you very much for watching. It's great to be back. I'll see you really soon.